and welcome to Hackney Church Everywhere. It is so good to be back together again and we have got some amazing things lined up for this morning. We're going to worship, so I wonder if you would just take a moment to pray with me as we prepare ourselves. Father God, we thank you that you are for us and that by your Spirit you are with us. Would we encounter you afresh this morning? Amen. Jesus 
Amen. Isn't it so great to worship together? And families, straight after this service, you can head over to hackney.church forward slash kids for the next episode of Kids Everywhere. Coming up this week, Pray Everywhere continues on Tuesday and Thursday, 8 a.m. both of those days on Zoom. Let me tell you about Alpha Everywhere, because there has been an amazing response to the current course. So much so that we are starting another course on Wednesday, the 20th of May. So if you missed out on the last course, or you're interested in exploring life's big questions, then head over to hackney.church forward slash alpha and register for your free place. Next up, youth. Hack New Church Youth Groups continue this Thursday night. If you're 11 to 18 and you're not yet in a Hack New Church Youth Group, you need to be. You can sign up by DMing us at Hack New Church Youth on Instagram or just click the link in our bio. We also have Connect Groups and this is the perfect time for you to join one. You can find your local community on our Connects page at hackney.church forward slash connects. Then this Thursday, Weaver, Christy Balfour, member of our church, who has been designing and making new altar cloths for the newly restored Hackney Church, will be coming on Instagram Live at eight o'clock to walk us through some of the process. What more could you want? Come and learn something new. Next, we have another Lockdown Diary special, this time coming from the Brooks family. It is one of a kind. Take a look at this. My butt off to keep my business from deleting Cleaning everything and watching Tiger King Penning letters to my friends Haven't seen since I was ten On a Zoom party with my background arty Cause there are some weirdos on house party Enjoying the sun on my one walk a day Making sure I stay two meters away and when I'm done With this house when I'm done With this now I will host a giant get together With all my neighbors will be friends forever And on that fine day Never see the world in the same way And every day I'll touch my mates on the face I'll forget about personal space And I'll dance all over the place And at the end of the day on a Thursday I might still go outside and clap and say Thank you for what you do Cause there's no way we'd survive this time Without some people being kind I want you to know you're on my mind a smile is hard to find Oh, there's no way we'll survive this time Without some people being kind And I want you to know you're on my mind Even though a smile is hard to find I'm stuck, stuck in the house Behind closed doors, looking through the window Pain, in pain My brain is bored out of its mind I can't even find the words to say The way I feel
Hey everybody, it's Mark and Jenna here and it's so nice to be with you today. We miss you all so much. On Monday the 18th of May, Hackney Church is launching the Marriage Course Everywhere. Yeah, Jenna and I have been married now for 10 years. We've got three small children and it's fair to say that this season has uh, shown us how important our marriage to one another is, you know, how to communicate well, how to relate to each other well, how to get over disagreements, uh, how to parent our kids well, and how to keep our love for each other alive. Yeah. We first did the marriage course when we had been married for four years, and the tips and tools we learned that we still use every day have been invaluable. The marriage course is simply designed to help couples invest in their relationship and to build a strong marriage. Yeah, so here's a little sneak peek of what to expect on the marriage course. Marriage involves two people, they meet. You found me really attractive, really quickly. <laughs> they fall in love. She's passionate. <laughs> they get married and embark on a relationship that's designed to be one of increasing intimacy. I really couldn't see my life without her. But that's not automatic. We have to keep working at our marriage. Because I wasn't getting much affirmation, I started getting that from other places. Our marriage was nearly over. If you start building good habits in your relationship, you'll be reaping the effects of those choices in 5, 10 or 20 years' time. I can't let my past define my future. We have to build our own reality. The aim of the marriage course is to strengthen the connection between you as a couple. Love grows us. This is not a silly sentimental idea. This is science fact. How about one that we don't really hear about? How about this one? Fun. Marriage ought to be fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point? The marriage course is built on universal principles that are relevant to any couple anywhere. In years to come, you'll look back on having built a marriage as perhaps the most important achievement of all in your lives. The Marriage Course Everywhere is online, it's entirely private for you and your spouse, and it's completely free. And so we'd love to invite you to be a part of it. And registration is so easy. You just simply go to hackney.church forward slash marriage to register your place and we'll be in touch with all the information that you need. Yeah, we really look forward to seeing you very soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mark and Jenna. And a big thank you to everyone for sending in your messages of greetings and encouragement. Here's a few from around the church. Hello, Hackney Church. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Hackney Church. 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 From, from the Bailey family. family. We love, we love you. you. Hey, Hackney Church. We miss you. Hello, Church. We miss you from the Missing seeing everyone's faces. Looking forward to catching up over a cup of coffee. See you soon. God bless. Miss you. See you soon. See you soon. Hey everyone, wherever you are. Come and see you all soon. Bye. Welcome to this week's edition of the Hard Hat Diary. I'm here in Prodigal Square. Behind me, the church, St. John of Hackney, the halls of the church next to me here. And this is gonna be an amazing space when we get to reopen it. And then this square is named after a statue of the Prodigal Son by the artist Charlie Maxson. And today I can reveal to you for the first time, it's literally just gone in, what it's gonna look like. And it's a real picture of what our mission is as a community, bring hope to the heart of Hackney, to welcome people just as God welcomes them. And this is literally a picture of the father embracing the prodigal son, a picture of what it means to be a relationship with God. So have a little look, here we are. It's just gone in, there's the concrete plinth at the bottom. And here is the statue. The first time you can see the father holding the son, his limp in his arms, but like many of us right now, we're all feeling a little bit like, oh, and that's a picture of God's love for us, that we are held, we are loved, even in the midst of a storm like we're in right now, God's got it and God's got us. See you soon, thanks for tuning in, bye. We wanna thank you so much, Hackney Church, for your continued giving. We are so, grateful for your faithful generosity in this time. 
and yet now is not the time to stop because the need keeps rising. Just this past week, thousands of meals have been given away through our food bank and lighthouse project. So can I encourage you, keep on praying, keep on encouraging and keep on giving as we seek to be a church who offers hope in word and deed to the people of East London in this moment. Would you head over to hackney.church forward slash give today. In times of testing, we often look to the promises of God, don't we? And as we were beginning to shape this current series that we're in, we began to feel this new song emerge too. We felt like it was this response to the promises of God, that he is the God of the breakthrough, that he is the God that leads us through the storm. He is our firm foundation. He is the one that helps us in times of trouble. And this song is a song of hope. It's a declaration of who God is. And we hope and pray that it will help you worship and encounter God during the season. In God my refuge, I will sing your name in the battle. Everything I face, oh you fight every fight for me. When the storm comes, the seas they rise, I will look up, I will fix my eyes, so oh, you fight every fight for me. Yeah, you fight every fight for me. So I will call on the name of the Lord. There
Hello, it is so great to have you with us. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're doing okay. I hope your weekend is going well. You know, we can't wait to be together offline as well as online. The story so far on Hackney Church Everywhere. The last few weeks, we have been in a training series called After the Storm. In the first session, we looked at how to practice resistance, courage, community and communion with God in the midst of the storm. Then last week, we looked at resilience, how to be kind, to light a fire, to shake it off. And I want to thank all you Taylor Swift fans who got in touch about Shake It Off. I had no idea we had so many Tay-Tay fans in the church. We'll pray for you at some point in the future. And if you missed it, don't miss out. You can watch again, you can like, you can post, you can share on our YouTube channel and on Facebook now too. I want to encourage you, you are doing great, not just by leaning in, but also by taking one or two things each week and putting them into action in your life. You're going to see real, actual change in Jesus' name. Can I encourage you today? Have a notes app, have your Bible app or a physical Bible ready, a a notebook, a journal. And as something speaks to you in this session, just jot it down. What that's going to do is help you learn. And when you do that in turn, you will be transformed. And don't forget, I love hearing how you're getting on. Drop me an email, hello at hackney.church with your thoughts. If you're new, we'd love to keep in touch. So this week, we're continuing working through the story of Paul after the storm. In this episode, Paul is invited into relationship with a local civic leader, effectively the mayor of Malta. As a church community, we are blessed to have great relationships with our local mayors, councillors, partners across the boroughs of Hackney and Wolfham Forest. And so today I thought it'd be just fun to ask them to bring a message of encouragement to us as a church community today. So here are the mayors. Thanks, Al. And um, I really was keen to be talking to Hackney Churches today because I've just been hearing about the amazing work that you're doing. And I think we approach this crisis um, with some sense of what was important in society. Um, We, we of course, still, we're happy for carers and valuing the NHS, but it's been that outflow of volunteers and institutions, not just in Hackney, but I know you work beyond uh, Hackney's um, borders, uh, and that's what you're celebrating today. And whether it's the food parcels that have been being delivered, whether it's the hot food that you're providing, checking in on the most vulnerable, you're just doing so much. It's something we talk about at Christmas, but it's been all year round um, for, for you guys uh, in, in the church and never more so than at the time of crisis. So my big message is keep doing what you're doing. It's vitally important. Um, it's a huge part of that Hackney spirit and that civic um, response. Um, we know as a council we can't do it all. So I thank you really as mayor from the council on behalf of the community you're having that really big impact. And I just can't wait for the time when we get to come back together again and celebrate what we've um, achieved because these are um, really uncertain times. And, and it's a context where we are mourning and we are worried about the most vulnerable. And there'll be people in the congregation that have lived through some really difficult times. But then we've also rallied and made sure that we're there there for our fellow uh, Hackney uh, and other East London residents. So a big thank you from me. Hello, church. My name is Councillor Antoinette Bramble. I'm the Deputy Mayor here at the London Borough of Hackney, the Cabinet Member for Education, Children's Social Care and Young People. I'm also the Deputy Leader of the Local Government Association. But Rev Al will say my most important job is church warden here at Hackney Church. I just want to encourage you to keep going and doing what you're doing and just share the message of hope. Hope in the heart of Hackney, hope in the heart of East London is so important in these times. And when we come together and encourage each other, it helps us all to keep going. I have seen tremendous Hackney heart in the way that people have given in our community and the church has been part of that. So keep donating, keep volunteering, keep calling and loving one another and continue the message of hope. Hello everyone. My name is Chris Robbins. I'm the uh, Mayor of Waltham Forest, but I'm also a uh, Leighton resident, which I've been now for some 40 years. And I have to tell you, it's wonderful to see the Leighton Parish Church 
uh, coming to life uh, over the recent months. And what a time to come to life, goodness me. Our hands have now stretched into Hackney, our friends both on a civic level and now on, on, on a spiritual level, and it really brings a great deal of joy uh, to, to the people in, in our community, not only Leighton, but across Waltham Forest as well. We've been able to do some very practical work um, with, uh, with us assisting each other in making connections, really. It's difficult to get out the front door. I've been stuck in my house now with my wife for 51 days, but we can still make things happen, um, link people up with each other. And so, you know, I send my best wishes to, to all of you. We're all going through the same thing. We all miss our family. Uh, we all miss those hugs that we're used to. Um, but they will come. We will get there. Get through it as best you can. We're here. I know Reverend Al is there with you as well. So bless you all. And let's hope that one day in the not too distant future, we'll all end up in the Hackney Church and the Leighton Church uh, celebrating having got through this terrible time. Well, thank you to the mayors. We love you. We are so grateful for all that you do to serve the people of East London. Today, I want to talk to you about the single most important thing in your life, your relationships. Times of crisis or challenge, it's actually our relationships that matter to us the most. They're the things that we hold on to more tightly. Times like this, Actually, our relationships at the same time are under huge pressure, like never before. What's gonna happen when we leave the lockdown and we enter this strange, socially distant world? What's gonna happen when we have to go to real life meetings and have real life conversations with real life people, not just virtual people on Zoom? What's gonna happen when we can't go to school anymore in our slippers or go to work in our pajamas on our bottom half? Well, the good news is God has a plan for you and I, for our relationships to thrive after the storm. And that's what we're going to unpack today. We're going to be looking at why God cares about your relationships and how to grow in healthy relationships. Let's start with why. Why are our relationships so important? Well, in a nutshell, the answer is because we are relational beings. We're created for relationship with God and with each other. God is relational. God isn't self-isolating, alone up in heaven. Metaphorically, when God wakes up in the morning, he doesn't look out the window and say, hmm, look out the cosmic loneliness from space and kind of say to himself, good morning, cold, dark universe. You know, God is in his essence relational. He's in relationship with himself as a trinity. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When God the Trinity wakes up in the morning, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they all kind of say good morning to each other. God is in relationship with himself. It's a relationship of love and joy, of, of fun, like a dance. That's what God is like. So we were created from relationship. And our origin story, according to the Bible, is that we're made in the image of that relational God. It's reflected actually in our being. We are actually Trinitarian in nature, if you think about it. We are body, mind, and spirit. It's reflected in our physicality. We are born as a trinity of human relationships. You have a mother and a father, and they give birth to a new life. We're created from relationship. And we're created for relationship. From the beginning to the end of the Bible, from the very first book, to the last book, we learn that we're created for relationship with God and with each other. In Genesis 2.18, the Lord God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Then right in the last book of the Bible, we see that God created us for relationship with him in the end. 21, chapter 21, verse 3 of Revelation says this, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. He will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. So we were created from relationship and for relationship. In the Baz Luhrmann film, Moulin Rouge, Ewan McGregor's character, Christian, says this, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved 
in return to relationship. So the big question then this week is how do we grow healthy relationships after the storm? Well, we find in just one verse in this story, three keys to practicing healthy relationships after the storm. Would you turn with me, if you have a Bible or or an app on your phone, to Acts 28, a reminder of the story so far. Paul survives this shipwreck. Then on the beach, he survived being bitten by a venomous snake. Then Paul, a prisoner, along with Luke, his traveling companion, stranded on this beach on a strange island at the mercy of the elements and the people he'll meet. He's there. What is going to happen? We find out something extraordinary happens in verse 7 of this story. There was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. The first key to practicing healthy relationships is be welcoming. Be welcoming. Practice relationship. That means being prepared to meet people where they're at. Some people appear to have it all together. Their Facebook profile is picture perfect. Don't believe it. It's probably just a filter. Others seem to be completely washed up on the shore of your life looking like a wreck. They're probably just being honest with you. We're all in need of help. We're all vulnerable. We're all emotionally a wreck half the time. But actually, we're a gift from God to each other. There are moments when we come into each other's lives where your burden can be my blessing and my burden can become your blessing. We need each other. We weren't created to be alone. So here, Paul is washed up on the beach. He's a prisoner of the Roman state. He's on his way to stand trial for his faith. And yet, Luke, who writes this, recounts how Publius, the chief official of the island, welcomed him. He welcomed us, it says. Publius is described in the original Greek as protos. And that means the first, the leader, the governor. I guess he was the equivalent of the mayor. Instead of rejecting him or imprisoning him, the lead Roman governor of the island welcomes him in. The point is this. If you want to have great relationships, be inclusive, not exclusive. Don't judge people, welcome them. I mean, try it this week. Try welcoming people in your social circles, even if it's online. Don't expect everyone to be perfect. None of us are. Everyone is welcome. Don't set your standards for relationship so impossibly high or unwisely low. But in that safe space, expect people to come as they are. Don't expect to change everyone. You can't. Love people as they are. You know, if you wait for the perfect man or the perfect girl to turn up in your life and you think, I'm going to wait for the exact dream person to marry, it's never going to happen. You sometimes have to meet people where they're at and just accept that you're not perfect. You know, perfection is the enemy of peace most of the time in our relationships. I'm not saying settle for the lowest common denominator. I'm saying meet people as they are. Love people as they are. That's what God does with you and me. He loves us. He welcomes us. And of course, we need to maintain healthy boundaries, the right social distancing and healthy emotional boundaries. Don't confuse social distancing with emotional distancing. You can be boundaried, but be healthy. That's key. So welcome people. Here's the first takeaway this week. Why don't you include someone this week that you haven't before in something you're doing? I mean, invite someone to hang out on Zoom. Invite someone to your connect group. Invite someone to Alpha. Maybe include a member of your family in Hackney Church everywhere. Or phone someone you've not spoken to for a while and just say, hey, I wanted to just see how you're doing. Reach out to somebody you haven't seen. Include someone in what you're doing. That is to be welcoming. And what you're going to find is it actually strengthens your relationships. Then the second key to practicing healthy relationships is be vulnerable. The Maltese are described by Luke, the author of Acts. 
acts as barbaroi. In the Greek, it's the word from which we get the word barbarian. And some translations of the Bible say barbarians, but actually, far from being barbarians, the word actually is what the Greeks used to describe those who didn't speak Greek. In other words, the non-Greek speaking world were called barbaroi. It was an alien culture, sure. They didn't share the same language as Paul, the same customs as was common right across the Roman Empire. And at times when you meet people who are different to you, you're like, is it going to work? Am I going to get on with them? Am I going to be accepted? Am I going to connect with you? You're different to me. What's fascinating, instead of being alienating these barbaroi, practice unusual kindness. They overcome their fear by being vulnerable. The mayor actually practices hospitality. We read, he welcomes us into his home. When we first moved to Hackney, we wanted to get to know the community. Sure, we met them on Sunday at church, but it didn't feel like we could really have a chance to get to know people. So in the first few months, we took a night a week and we invited members of the congregation who'd been at church for a long time over for dinner. And we wanted to get to know them. I remember the first night we did this, the first person rang the doorbell and it was a guy called Trevor still comes to our nine o'clock service. Trevor is retired. He's from the West Indies. He used to be a plumber. He has the most amazing collection of gold teeth, gold rings, gold everything. The next person who arrived was Victor. Victor used to be in the army. He is one of the nicest people I've ever met. These guys are legends. On and on, these wonderful people came in through our front door. I have to admit, the beginning of the evening, I was so nervous. It's one thing letting people into your building, It's another letting them into your kitchen. You feel vulnerable, you feel exposed. What if they don't like the food? What if they don't like my family? What if it's a bit of a nightmare? Do you know we had the best night? In fact, those dinners in the early days were one of the highlights of our time in Hackney. We learned so much about people, their passions, their stories. In the end, we only had to stop doing them because as the church group, we just couldn't keep going. Instead, now, we all do this. There are dozens of dinner parties or connect groups happening this week all across the city, of course, virtually this week. But here's the point. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Take a risk. Open your life up. Jesus is vulnerable. He weeps with his friends. He shares his innermost thoughts. Vulnerability is key to practicing healthy relationships. We may impress people with our strengths. We connect with people through our weaknesses. There's Brenny Brown says, staying vulnerable is a risk we have to take if we want to experience connection. So practice being vulnerable this week. Find two or three close people that you can be vulnerable with. Remove the mask. Share your feelings. A great place to start actually is asking yourself, how are you feeling? Take note of your emotional life. If you have a journal, Just record what's going on, what you're feeling. Something that's really, really helpful is a tool called an emotion wheel. You can download it, Google emotion wheel, download it, print it up, stick it in the back of your notebook or your journal. And what that does is help you articulate how you're feeling. Ask yourself, how are you feeling today? Are you worried? Are you anxious about life after lockdown, what it's gonna be like going on public transport? Talk to yourself, have a conversation. Because actually connecting with our vulnerabilities is a really key part of healthy relationships. So takeaway number two this week, talk about your emotions. Talk about your emotions. Okay, let's do it right now. I'll put myself on the spot. Um, How am I feeling? Um... Right now, I've got to be honest with you, I'm feeling a bit stressed because I've meant to finish this recording an hour ago. I meant to be in another meeting on Zoom and I'm worried about all of that. Uh, Try not to look worried, but I am. Uh, uh, Right now, I find the whole thing of filming really uncomfortable. This whole thing is so strange, like not being able to see the congregation I'm speaking to. And I know there's, you know, hundreds, even over a thousand of you watching, but actually right now it's really weird speaking to you but not seeing you and um that is something that i'm you know it's just just getting used to is kind of weird (sighs) what else am i feeling feel like i need the toilet right now 
And I'm pretty sure they're gonna edit that last one out, which is good. Yeah. So, can I encourage you this week as part of talking about your emotions to join a connect group on our website, to come on the marriage course, it's gonna be amazing. Try something this week to connect you with vulnerability. Then the final key to practicing healthy relationships is this, be generous. Practice generous hospitality. The key to healthy relationships is to prefer the other, to give yourself away, to not think of yourself too much. Don't build your relationships around social transactions. What can I get out of that relationship? But around social generosity, what can I give to that relationship? If you do that, your relationships are going to flourish. Great blessing will come on your life. That's what Publius does. He gives himself away for the people of East Malta. I mean, it's kind of like his banner would be for the people of East Malta. In fact, the name Publius, which is one of the most common names across the Roman world, the fifth most common name, in fact. It means of the people, of the people. It says this, Publius showed us generous hospitality for three days. Generous to a T, I mean, Publius is true to his name, he's for the people. More than needed, you know, one night would have been enough, but he has them over for a mini break, and it's an Airbnb in Malta right now. It would have cost him money and inconvenienced him, it would have been a burden on his life and his household, but he chooses to do it. Here's the takeaway this week. Give yourself away. Be generous with your resources. Surprise someone this week with a gift. Practice generosity. Even when we feel like our worlds have shrunk, what it'll do is prepare us for life after the lockdown. As we get ready for life after the storm, God is calling us as a church to practice relationship, to be welcoming, to be vulnerable, to be generous. Imagine what can happen in the week ahead as you put this into practice. You are already the most extraordinary church and those of you who joined us now online on Hatley Church everywhere. Since the lockdown began, you've been part of giving faithfully We've seen many people give extraordinary one-off gifts towards our efforts. We've been able to now feed over 20,000 meals to people in Hackney and in Leighton. This week, an individual, let's call him Darish, was referred to us by one of the local councils. He hadn't eaten in two days. Another story. Each week we hear stories like this. The council wanted to help him but couldn't organise food to get to him for 72 hours more and they couldn't start financially supporting him until the end of the following week with all their best efforts. He was in a desperate situation. But one of you got in touch with him and found he was just round the corner. You invited him to Lighthouse where he picked up a hot meal and a drink first in 48 hours. They set him up with a food parcel to last him for the entire week. He rang the next day and he said this, I can't believe it. Thank you so much. This is a lifeline for me. I had nowhere else that I thought I could go. You don't understand how much this has helped me out. And then he ends his message with thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, Hackney Church everywhere, it is not good for Darish to be alone. We are for the people of East London. We're here to bring hope to people's lives. It's not good for Darish to be hungry. We're here to make a difference with our relationships. And I believe today that the Holy Spirit wants to anoint you, equip you to practice relationship in a new and powerful way. You know, the kingdom of God flows along relational lines. Today, I want to encourage you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that God wants to empower you so that your relationships can have an impact in Jesus' name. Just look at the impact on Publius. Do you know the tradition in Malta holds that Publius became a Christian and was made the first bishop of Malta? In fact, to this day, there's a cathedral in Medina, in Malta. It's said to have been built on the site of Publius's house. 
You know, I believe God today wants to build a cathedral, not a physical one, but a relational one and a spiritual one. And I believe he wants to build it right over your home today. A cathedral of grace and kindness, of mercy and forgiveness. A cathedral of encounter where you can be honest before God and with those around you. There's no mask, there's no hiding, there's coming as you are and meeting the love of God. A cathedral of generosity where you will experience outrageous blessing that flows from restored relationships after the storm. In Jesus' name, amen. That's my prayer for you watching right now. And so why don't you join me? You know, I really believe that God is working in your life today. Every one of you watching, you're not here by accident. So I'm gonna pray a simple prayer. I want you to echo this in your heart, if you will. And what we often encourage people to do at church and even over um, the screen today, I know it feels weird, but just close your eyes, hold your hands out. Have a moment to meet with God one-to-one without any distractions around you. So kids, right way through to our longest standing members watching this, why don't you take a moment to hold your hands out, close your eyes. Come, Holy Spirit. Why don't you echo that prayer in your heart? Come, Holy Spirit. I welcome you into my life. Help me to be vulnerable today, to receive your love in the heart of hearts. Help me to be vulnerable with the ones around me to be brave and then help me thirdly to be generous to those around me. Let my life overflow with the same grace and mercy you've shown me that we might be a church famous for love after lockdown. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, well, guys, we're going to worship now. And I'd love again to encourage you to stand and we're going to respond. And, you know, this is a part of our response. Part of our prayer life is to worship. So as we sing this song, wherever you are, let your whole heart engage with God. Give your whole heart to him in vulnerability. Welcome him into your life right now. So let's worship together.
Death has no hold on me Cause your grace holds our ground And your grace holds me now Your grace holds me now See you over on Instagram Live in just a few minutes to catch up with Al. And just to say, that new Hackney Church song, God of the Breakthrough, will be available on YouTube really soon, so you'll be able to re-watch it and share it with your friends.